Traction Control, Stability Control, EBS, Virtual Racing Line, the four horsemen of the apocalypse which many people love and other people hate for multiple reasons. I made a video already about driving assets a few months ago, with uh, written notations only, explaining how driving assets work, why they work, and uh, when it's better to use them and when it's better to turn them off. Well, in this video I show you how to get rid of driving assets without back the consequences. Let's see. Why do we use driving assist? Traction control prevents the wheels from spinning when you accelerate. Stability control prevents the car from drifting or reduces the speed when it feels the understeer is too evident. ABS prevents the wheels from locking them while braking. Driving assist help you electronically to keep the control of your car. Setup helps you mechanically to keep the control of your car. Let's take uh, the braking with it ABS for example. A wrong brake in BS could lock the wheels more easily. A more balanced brake BS could limit the locks and helping you to fully use the potential of your brakes. For example, here I have the brake BS set to 58% on the front. Let's see what happens if I fully brake without a BS. As you can see, it's very easy to lock the wheels while fully braking. Let's repeat the test uh, with the brake BS set uh, on 46% uh, on the front. As you can see, wheels haven't locked because the brake BS is well balanced between front and rear according to the weight transfer car weight balance and tires dimensions. If you set it correctly, yes, it will be still possible to lock the wheels while fully braking, but you'll get a limited lock, easy to avoid even if you don't have a great feeling with the brake pedal. For the traction control, you can set up two different elements to avoid spinning with high powerful cars, the transmission and the limited slip differential. As you know, a long transmission gives you a lower acceleration but a higher top speed, while a short transmission gives you a faster acceleration but with a limited stop speed. Question: On high powerful cars, is it better to set a long or a short transmission. Why do you need a short transmission to improve a fast acceleration which is fast already due to the high power? You will get even more wheel spin during acceleration. So, of course, it's better a long transmission. In my case, I use a close gear ratio. I explained that uh, how it works uh, in uh, one of my videos. Limited slip differential is useful if you accelerate while cornering. The traction control works a lot when you accelerate while cornering because there is always one wheel which will have less grip uh, due to the weight transfer. The goal of the limited slip differential is to distribute the torque and the power of the engine between the left and the right wheels to avoid the excess of power spins while cornering.
on a rear wheel drive cars I suggest you to set a differential to have slightly more power on the inside wheel to the corner in that way you have a light understeer with a minimal loss of traction but with more stability in that way you get rid of the stability controls as well Downforce and anti-roll bar are great elements as well to get rid of uh, stability control. Front wing and the rear wing have different purposes. The front wing improves the cornering speed. The rear wing improves the stability. So to have more stability, especially at high speed, add more rear downforce. At low, medium and high speeds, uh, we have to set up the anti-roll bar. stiffer on the front and softer on the rear. This will increase the understeer. But be careful, on front wheel drive cars you have a lot of understeer already. So it's better to set a stiffer anti-roll bar on the rear and softer on the front. If you want more infos about uh, suspensions I suggest you to watch this video I made a few years ago. How about the virtual racing line? Ok, it's legit to use it on tracks uh, you drive for the very first time, but after 4-5 laps, uh, let's stop it, come on. Visualize and memorize the object around the track, you can use as point of reference for braking. A signal, a panel, a wall, a curb, a tree, a bridge. Choose the object you like more and use it as a reference point, or mark point if you prefer. But be careful, reference point isn't the same thing as a breaking point. Sometimes reference points could be a few meters before or after the breaking point, or if you're lucky at the same point of the breaking point. Reference points help you to calculate the breaking points, but they aren't breaking points.
For the racing line, it's important to memorize the corner. If it's tight, long, if there is another corner, if there is a straight after it. Keep in mind, in 99% of uh, cases before a corner, you have to stay on the outside line, close to the border and then hit the apex which is uh, usually on the inside curb or close to it. Remember this, carry actions are the mirror of your movements with steering and pedals. Fast steering. Flat out all the way. Pressing the brake pedal suddenly. All these actions make the car spin and make you lose the control of your car. Of course, you can use the driving assist which limits uh, the brutality of your movements because uh, usually that's what uh, they actually do. But as I showed you in this other video I made, uh, in many cases driving assist slow you down. So it's better to improve your sensitiveness with all tools you use for racing. Keep the control of your car while turning. Turn the steering wheel gently. To avoid the wheel spin while accelerating, press gradually the throttle. To avoid locking the wheels on braking, release gradually the brake pedal when you see the speed is decreasing. Try braking. In simple words, be smooth with your movements and you'll see how easily it is to drive your car. I hope uh, this video helped you to understand better the car reaction and to drive without driving assist. Now you know the theory. Turn on your favorite racing game and go testing it. See you in the next video!